We're fired up to talk with you about how to give and receive feedback today. And me and Cord Sachs, um, my CEO, our fearless leader, are going to be tag teaming this one today. And I don't think there's a better person to have on this webinar than, than you, Cord. And you would never say this about yourself or about us as an organization because you're incredibly humble. But I think that you've done an exceptional job of building a feedback culture from top to bottom inside of our organization. There will never be a time when somebody comes off a call now and they don't ask for feedback. And so I'm, I'm really excited that you're going to get to share some of the inner workings of that and how other people could experience something very similar in the work dynamics of their culture. So for those of you who don't know Cord yet, you will quickly find out that he is an expert on all things feedback. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass it to you. I'm also joining, I'm Josh Swing, but I'm just playing support here. I'm going to be the, the color commentary to Cord's play-by-play -play today. Uh, I get to serve as our, our team captain here inside of Wild Spark, and I love feedback. I think you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody who loves feedback more. But Cord, I want to pass it to you to set us up for the theme of today and to start rocking this because I know we got a lot of content for our audience. Yeah, absolutely. Lo love diving into this topic. I really do think it's one of the more pragmatic. Um, if you could go apply this immediately next week, I think you could see immediate results. And I think it will have one of the biggest differences, whatever position, whatever role you're in. If you lead a team, if you're on a team. Uh, most of you are in one of those two scenarios. You lead a team or you're on a team, you lead a company or you're in a company. Uh, but to the, your ability to give free feedback uh, is what unlocks your uh, ability to become elite. And uh, I just watched uh, an incredible series. If, if you had said, what series could you watch again? Uh, erase your memory, watch it again. I just finished this new series on Apple called Masters of the Air. Uh, think this is uh, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, uh, did an incredible job. This was this is basically Band of Brothers and B-17s uh, taking you back to World War II and uh, the Bloody Hundredth. Uh, the 8th Air Force Division uh, had a uh, an outpost in, in eastern, uh, if you will, England uh, that had a front row seats to uh, to, to to having access to to Germany. And so uh, they became known as the Bloody Hundredth. They had more casualties in the first uh, year of operation than any other unit uh, in World War II. Over 73% of the men who came in uh, when they were deployed uh, died. 731 uh, men died. 73 airplanes were, were, uh, were shot down. And so uh, what was interesting, though, is I watched this and then I read up on it. Uh, I had I got to have an incredible opportunity to actually go and speak to uh, shout out Metro Aviation, a group of uh, incredible uh, aviators, if you will, mechanics. I had 60 mechanic man managers and supervisors, and I got to talk through this this whole principle on feedback through the lens of of the masters of the air theme and backdrops. So we're going to carry that through today. But at the end of the day, if you read up on the bloody hundredth on this unit, they had to get incredibly good. They came in so young. But there was not a unit that progressed more throughout the war and made a bigger difference than this, this bomber unit. In fact, became known and got tagged as masters of the air because they were the ones that paved the way uh, for the B-51 Mustang or the, the 51 Mustang to come in and be able to uh, allow the, the, the launch on Normandy. And so we, we're... we're we fly an American flag today because of these guys. And so uh, what, the one thing you see is that every time they came in from a mission, the very first thing they did was a mission debrief and gave very detailed feedback on exactly how the mission went. Every man, every, every, every team gave feedback immediately. And you just saw there was this habit of older pilots giving younger pilots feedback all the time because it was a life and death situation. And so I know for most of you out there, there is not a life and death situation on whether or not you get feedback uh, after your next, after your last team meeting uh, or after your next uh, engagement with a, with a client. It's, it's not life and death, but boy, you're missing out on getting better every single time. And you, 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 there, there's just the difference between um, getting feedback 1% every time you have an opportunity 
and, and waiting. See, the problem we have with, with feedback, if you will, and, I, and, and, and before we, we knock off the problem, let, I want to ask you guys, uh, Swing, I'll just take this one, but on a scale yeah. of 4 to 10, as you start thinking about feedback, uh, how well do you give feedback? So on a scale of 0 to 10, I want you to ask yourself that question first. So we, you can get a little baseline before we go through this, but how often do you give feedback? Yeah, you think like or like a zero is going to be like, hey, it never happens. Obviously, yeah. a ten is like, what would you say a ten is? A ten is always a ten is every time I sit down, every time I have an engagement, uh, I give feedback to those that that I lead and those that I don't lead. Mm -hmm. So where are you? Get it, get a baseline so we can move through today uh, and really see how see how much we grow. Um, and so here, here's the problem: most people just don't have time for feedback. They've mm -hmm. never really built it into the status quo of how they, how they do work, uh, how they lead. Uh, some of us think of feedback as a formal evaluation. Uh, I can't tell you how many, how many employers I talk to, how many owners say, oh yeah, we do feedback. We do it once a year. Uh, once a year we sit down and we have a formal evaluation, um, sometimes twice a year. But if that's, that, that's not feedback, that's not the kind of feedback that we're talking about. Uh, the type, type of feedback we're going to be talking about it, it gives us the opportunity to continuously grow our teams. So that's the problem. If we're not giving regular feedback, a lot of things can happen and, and don't happen. But the, the number one thing we miss out on is we miss out the opportunity to make someone better every time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and most of it is because we just don't know where to start. So mm -hmm. let me give you a definition real quick, because feedback is not flighty. It's not whimsical. It's not just spitting out information at random. Feedback is communication given in relation to a role or a goal, all right? And so for a lot of us, we've got to get real clear on what our role is or what some of our goals are in order to get, a, in order to give or receive effective feedback. But know that throughout this whole, the, through our webinar today, you're going to see that it's giving this information to someone else. It's receiving this information in relation to uh, uh, one of your roles or one of your goals. Uh, and so here, here's a great quote, followers who tell the truth and leaders who listen do it, and it's an unbeatable combination. When mm -hmm. you think of some of the great coaches that are out there, I mean, I, I'm a big Auburn guy, if you know me, but there, there's a coach in this state that is a legend, um, <laughs> and, and he gave feedback in every single opportunity that, that he had. And this is Coach Saban, of course. Uh, I'll, I'll shout his name. Out. Thank you for I saying his name, Courtney. Name. I'm giving him props. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, it always, it always amazed me. It could be two minutes left in the game. Alabama's up by 50. And uh, that outside, the outside man on the kickoff team didn't stay in his lane and uh, misses outside co uh, containment. And Nick Saban is losing his stuff on the sideline with a 50 point lead with two minutes left in the game. And he never missed the opportunity uh, to give feedback. And so uh, feedback is all about telling people the truth and telling them it all the time on a regular basis. Mm. And then all you need is people that listen to it. If you are someone who tells the truth, we all want to know the truth deep down. It, 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 at first, it's hard. Uh, at first, it stings a little bit. But when you get used to hearing the truth and then it makes you better, it's something you start to crave. And so we've got a model that we're going to work through. So here, here it is. It's celebrate, champion, challenge. All right? Celebrate, champion, challenge. Celebrate champion challenge if we were when we were at the uh, at this conference where i got to speak to, speak to these uh these these aviation mechanics we said this five times looking into our eyes this is the model if you just learn this cadence it's going to change your leadership i promise and so it's it's, down, it's, it's what, simple but powerful cord and i'll share with the audience today those of you who aren't on wild spark we have a whole we have a a lesson which we'll we'll talk about here at the end so stick around for the end because we've got a cool opportunity for everybody that we'll announce but um, celebrate champion and challenge so simple, but so sticky. And because it's sticky, it's powerful. The amount of teams that I've talked to who two years later, three years later, after focusing on, on this breakdown, this framework will still regularly daily talk about celebrating champion and challenging is surprising and, uh, and really impressive. So I'll let you keep riding, but, but commit this to memory. People don't take that lightly. Yeah, so let's break it down. Let's make it real simple. Uh, there are very different parts to feedback. All right, we start with celebrate. We celebrate what? All right, and this is the simplest form of celebration. 
Uh, it's simply noticing and identifying something you've seen something someone doing really well, right, in relation to their role or a goal and simply letting them know about it. All right. And this th this comes very natural to us, whether we know it or not. And I'll, I'll, I'll refer back to my 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 football analogy. Uh, how many of us can go to a game on a Saturday in the fall and we don't have to be told that we need to identify certain things that are going well and simply celebrate and simply tell the world uh, that we are a fan of what just happened. Uh, whether it's a huge tackle, whether it's a, you know, it's a, a, a fourth and 31. I cannot believe I'm even bringing that reference back up. But we don't have to be taught how to celebrate. And so it's always bewildering to me that we don't do this more in our work environments. Mm -hmm. It's simply... It's simply keeping your head on a swivel and then being able to tell people what they've done very well. All right. So that's where it begins. And so now it helps to know the person, the individual that you want to celebrate. Some of us love to be celebrated in front of a group and some of a team in front of a team. I mean, throw the confetti cannons out in front of the whole team for some people. And there's some of us that would bother like that would embarrass someone. So you need to know who you're celebrating. But some of us just they need a pat on the back. But when you tell them, I've seen you do X and I've seen you do it really well. And I just wanted you to know, I want to celebrate that. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's very powerful. So that's where we start. Just keep your head on a swivel and notice things that are in relation to that role or goal that are pushing the team, the business, uh, the agenda forward and simply let them know you saw it. All right. That's where we start. So it moves though from, from that's, 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 that's somewhat powerful to a really, really deeply personal a uh, way that you push someone forward. And that is to, number two, is to champion them. It is, championing has everything to do with the who, the individual and who they are. Very different than what I've seen them do that's, that's outside of them. But I want to connect what I've seen them do, what I'm celebrating now, to who they are. To a characteristic or a quality or a value that I see in them that gives them identity. This is a super, super powerful, uh, powerful way to encourage, to motivate, to spur someone on. Great leaderships, le leaders know how to give identity to individuals. And I'll give you a couple stories. Number one for me, I'll never forget it was my first company that I, I, I started uh, back right out of college, right out of college, if you will. Um, and uh, I had a bunch of young leaders working for me and, and, and a bunch of college graduates were working for me. And I'll never forget, we would go and if we, we hit a big goal at the end of the quarter, we'd all go off to some weekend and do something fun. Uh, we'd get in this pool and we'd play this game called trash get ball. Uh, it, it's just this epic game with two trash cans on either end and you've got to get a ball in the trash can and you can do whatever you want. And I'll never forget this young college student. I'm about five years out of college. He comes up to me and he says, the way I watched you play trash get ball today reminds me of the leader that you are. He said, you're a leader that it, he said, you're you're the you're the type of leader that's a king that goes and fights the battle on the front lines with his men. And I mean, I'm, I'm giving you chills just saying it again today. <laughs> that has stuck with me. This 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 20 year old right out of college that I. That, that spoke identity into me. I've never forgotten that. And every time I need to get charged up, I think of that metaphor. I am a mm. king that likes to go to battle with the men in the trenches. It just, so he spoke identity into my life. He was five years younger than me at the time, spoke great identity in my life. Uh, this past season, my son played ninth grade football and, um, and he's smaller than most everybody on his team. He's had to work really hard um, he was a receiver and then he gets bumped up to tailback and he tells me, dad, they're putting me in at starting tailback for the first game. And so, you know, I'm on pins and needles. I go to the game, the kid tears it up. He has two touchdowns. He, he runs for 160 yards and I'm just beside myself. I had, I was a tailback myself and I watched him, if you will, do something he's never done. He didn't even know he could do. He's like, dad, I, I've never even played tailback before. I'll never forget going to the locker, you know, outside the locker room where you pick up your son and he got in the truck with me. And all I did is look at him and I said, son, two touchdowns, 161 yards. You are a running back. 
And he looked at me and he had a he got this big smile came on his face and he just reached out and embraced me. He grabbed me. And I knew in that moment I'd spoke identity into his life that really impacted him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it's, and, and it has impacted him to this day as he continues to grow to become a running back. So nonetheless, mm-hmm. champion, learn how to champion folks. It's so powerful. Um, even more so than just seeing what people do, speak identity into who they are. So, Man, that's great, Cord. I, I want to highlight that and even double down on it more. You, you mentioned that last situation, which shout out Judd. That was Judd, right? That was good. Go Judd. Uh, How easy of it would, how easy would it have been just to be like, oh, Judd, great job, man. You scored two touchdowns. Wow, that was so incredible. But you didn't stop there. And I think as leaders, we can't stop there. We got to take it one step further into the champion stage. So, really good stuff so far, celebrating, championing. What's the third thing? All right. So, this is where we get to have impact. Okay. We're motivating right now. We're inspiring right now. But this is where we really get to change another individual. Uh, is when we challenge. All right, when we leverage the fact now that I'm observing people and what they're doing well, uh, I'm championing who they are. I'm attaching value. You are faithful. You are diligent. Uh, you are uh, you are a you're a salesperson. Uh, you, you're a closer. I mean, the, the way you, you you can champion so that you now have the opportunity to challenge them. And challenge is simply one percent better. How can I make that person 1% better? better? Why is Nick Saban losing his stuff and going and getting the face of that special teams uh, player on the outside because he missed the assignment of staying in his lane? Because he knows even though there's two minutes left in the game and we're up by 50, it's not about that. It's about making that person and not losing the opportunity to make that person 1% better. And so at the end of the day, if we really want to lead and create multiplying leaders and lead leaders that have a successional impact behind us, the mindset is I always want to make people better and I'm willing to be a little uncomfortable Mm -hmm. for their best interest. But what you'll find out if you'll celebrate and champion well, you'll have margin and you will have made deposits to then challenge well. Mm -hmm. And so... There's a great uh, illustration swing. I'm going to let you tell it because if those of you who don't know, Josh Swing had the incredible opportunity of speaking with one of our clients, Chick-fil-A, uh, at, one of, at, the, at one of their, their regional conferences. And Rorick Denver, famous Navy SEAL, does a lot of speaking, uh, was one of the speakers. Dan Cathy was the other. And Josh Swing was the keynote right between them. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and so I, I want Josh to give this example because um, he does this really well. Uh, but but Rorick Denver has, a, has an incredible way of, of, of thinking about this challenge aspect of leadership. Mm. Uh, and, and he talks about how all of us have this reserve in us if we'll just have people step in and fill it. So tell them, tell them, tell them how this works. Yeah, we'll, we'll save all the ways I had to overcome imposter syndrome in that experience for the next webinar. We'll, we'll unpack that a little bit more for everybody. But for this, Rourke does this incredible illustration. And this guy is like, I mean, at the top of the top, when you talk about Navy SEALs and what they go through to get to the level that they operate at on the battlefield. And the illustration that does is, and I'll ask everybody to do this. This may this may seem a little weird, but Cord just talked about getting outside of our comfort zone. He, he talked about making ourselves a little uncomfortable so we can help people grow. So even if there's people around you in the office that are going to be staring at you, do this anyway. But he, he asked, Rourke Denver asked everybody to raise your hand. So do that right now. Raise your hand as high as it can go. So all the way up here, I'll even adjust my camera so you can see I'm all the way up here. Um, as high as you can go, raise your hand as high as you can go. And then to illustrate this concept of tactical, tactical reserve, I would ask you, raise it a little higher. Do it right now. Raise it a little higher, right? We all stretch. There's that little bit more. There's that 1% extra that we're able to go but we need somebody else to help uh, help push us to get there. So that's this whole challenge concept that Cord's talking about is helping people tap into that tactical reserve, that extra 1% that everybody has that I believe separates the elite from the average. Yep. So really beautiful concept. I have one more question for the audience, Cord, and then I'll kick it back to you. But a, a question that I'd have for everybody, just a moment of reflection here as you think about the 
the three C's that Core just unpacked, celebrating, championing, challenging. And you think about your personality, your wiring, what you typically are drawn towards when you think about the way that you engage with other people in your life, which of these comes easiest to you? Which is the most natural for you? Is it celebrating? Do you, are you Is your head on a swivel? Are you aware of all the things that are happening? Are you quick to celebrate those things that are happening? Is it championing? Do you have the unique gift of speaking value and identity into somebody on a regular basis? Or are you a great challenger? Um, are you extremely driven? Are you prone to call people to more that are around you in your circles? I'd love to hear which of these C's um, are easiest for our audience as we look around. Type in the chat. Type in the chat. I want to see. Yeah. What, what what are you naturally inclined to do? We got us we got a celebrating already from from Tina. Tina, I imagine that the people around you feel extremely valued because of your ability to lean in and celebrate. And Daniel is celebrate. So just something to think about as you think about what you do really well and maybe where you could focus more. But Cord, I want to pass it back to you. Let's keep this party going, man. We've got more to cover. Awesome. So I want you to know this feedback is a gift. All right. If we haven't convinced you already, feedback is a gift and you get something in return to the degree that you always give feedback and you're giving it regularly. What comes from that is people now believe you really want something for them and they're more apt to, to come and share new ideas with you. So feedback's a gift. And guess what the return is? The return is ideas. You get them thinking like an owner with you, wanting to come alongside you because you're asking on a regular basis. No, give me more. And then they naturally think, well, what if I just thought about giving them more without them asking? And that becomes fostering the, the gift of then giving back ideas. Ideas are a currency for our next success. You want people that think about the, the wins and the future wins of your team and your organization together with you. The greatest way you can do that is to give them feedback. So here's the question. What do you think is the healthy ratio between positive and negative feedback? I know we talk about this often. There's this ratio and you should, you know, is there really a ratio? Should you always give uh, one to one positive and negative feedback? Does it need to be 20 to one? I've literally heard both extremes. Um, what do you think? What, what ratio do you think is the, is the, is the really the, the biological, the scientifically proven ratio of how you can maximize, if you will, uh, your feedback? Throw it, throw it in the chat. What do you think? I'm interested if we get any, uh, accurate guesses here to the there is an actual ratio i, I know it's coming i know it's on the other side so i won't give it away yep yep two to one seven to one three to one so here's the deal the positive ratio is five to one now i've got this illustration uh on the front side of a bank if you will there's not just anything in this bank there's gold in this bank there has been great deposits that have put into this bank you need to think of feedback like you would deposits. Um, I didn't see anybody that I do. Daisy, Daisy Coates was a challenger. I love that. There are, there are those, there are a lot of leaders. That's all they knew. They grew up being challenged and that's how they lead is they challenge, challenge, challenge. And so we need to think about this in a proper ratio. I want to be giving, if you will, uh, positive, if you will, uh, deposits into this bank account uh, on a five to one ratio. Um, I don't want to get to a place to where I have nothing to take out of the account because I have taken and withdrawn uh, all of my deposits. And so naturally in the Celebrate Champion Challenge model, you get a two to one ratio. And so really what I want to free you up from is every time you celebrate and champion, you don't always have to then challenge. But if you're going to challenge, it always helps that you've built up your, your bank. And if you haven't, it's okay. You can come in and do a two to one ratio. You're still one ahead, but the healthiest ratio is five to one. So here's the question. And it's a different question. I'll let you ask this one swing. This is different than the question we had at the beginning, but it's still about feedback, but how's yeah. it different? Yeah. First shout out to Jake. Jake was, uh, the, from what I saw, I may have missed some, but Jake, Jake had the five to one ratio. Correct. So at a, at a boy, Jake, the, the question here is, on a scale of zero to 10, how often do you ask for feedback? So earlier, I believe the, the question that we asked was, how often do you give feedback scale of zero to 10? This one is, how how often do you ask for feedback? Why, why is this relevant, Cord? Why should we be evaluating the frequency of, of when we're asking for feedback? 
Yeah. So this, this is, this is a very different question, right? Uh, or well, how much do I, how much do I give feedback? Well, the greatest thing you can do to till the soil, if you, especially if you're a leader, if you lead any, if you lead a team, if you lead another individual, the greatest thing you can do to till the soil so that your team asks for feedback, uh, so that your team receives feedback well, is to simply ask for it yourself. Mm. See, when you ask for feedback uh, and you're in a situation, regardless of what it is, and you ask for feedback, especially when you're a leader, it communicates a couple things. Number one, it communicates humility. Uh, that, that I'm humble enough to ask. And that breaks down walls. It breaks down barriers between their, 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 the questions they haven't asked about you yet. Uh, what they're not, they're not quite sure if they can truly trust uh, being completely vulnerable with you. When you start asking for feedback, it really flips the psychological uh, expectation. Are you, so my leader is asking for feedback that means, wow, feedback must be a positive thing in his mind. Mm -hmm. So when he's given it, he's not upset with me. But then maybe I should learn to ask for feedback too. Uh, now, the goal would be on all of our teams that when we sit down and we've just finished whatever it may be, uh, a training session, a sales meeting, uh, an engagement with a client, uh, that we would simply ask, hey, how'd I do? Give me feedback. Give me one thing I could work on uh, to be better. And so to the degree that you can model that for your team is the degree that you'll be able to soften the blow when you, when you give feedback and they're not asking for it. But then what you'll also do is you'll model for them ultimately where we want our teams to be is that everybody asks for feedback. Like it becomes such a positive, the, the understanding of feedback in your culture becomes so positive that you can't not ask for it. Because at the end of the day, hey, you know you're going to get celebrated, you're going to get championed, but you're going to get and you're going to be made better. And that's when teams become elite. That's when you, you have, I don't even want to mention the number of national championships that Nick Saban has because he is never satisfied with continuing to make people better over and over and over again. And so here's the question. As a leader, how often should I ask for feedback? How often? How often should I ask for feedback? Just, just for the sake of time, we're going to keep moving. But how often should you ask for feedback? Well, your, your grandmother told you this before, your, grand, <laughs> your grandpa. But I had a nickel for every time you told me that. That's, that's where we're getting. Here we go. Another, another, another famous uh, leadership expert in uh, Hulk Hogan. ring said this. When I say every single time, brother, I mean every single time, every opportunity you have with someone else Make yourself better. So we ask for feedback in every scenario. It's how you should close out every one-on-one, -on -one, every opportunity you've had to train someone. You have, a, when I have someone brand new that's come into the into our office and it's their first week, I love sitting down with them and just, you know, when I'm training them in something or I'm casting the vision and laying out our values or whatever it is, I get to the end. And I say, hey, real quick, give me feedback on how I how well I did there. You know, I, I really pride myself in, in clearly show, sharing our, our vision, mission, and values with you. Give me feedback. Um, is, there, is there one thing I could have done better that would have made it a little clearer? And I love to see their eyes open up when the CEO is asking them on day one or week one for feedback. Mm -hmm. So every time as a leader, you have an opportunity to engage with someone else around something in your business, you have an opportunity to ask for feedback. Mm -hmm. and you have an opportunity to model how you want them to ask for feedback, and then you have the opportunity to get better. Some of the greatest challenges I have come from people that are under me for sure, but brand new in my organization mm -hmm. because they don't have they don't have a narrow mindset. They're not they don't have tunnel vision inside the organization. They can see things that other people can't because they're brand new. So the challenge is a leader every opportunity. That means today when you get off of this. Uh, this, this webinar and you go back to work, you have an opportunity today to ask for feedback. So I want to challenge you to do that. Yeah. So you can also give me and Cord feedback as soon as we get done with this, uh, webinar, we'll, we'll, we'll walk it out. <laughs> we're going to ask for it. So, hey, I want to do a, a team feedback survey. I want you to get another baseline for you and whatever team you're on. Okay. And so here's how this is going to work. I'm going to give you, I'm going to ask you eight questions and we're going to move through them pretty quickly. I do want you writing these down unless you're driving. 
All right. If you're driving, you may miss out on, 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 on summing up all of your points. But I do want you to sum up and to tally up uh, the number that you receive at the end, because I'm going to give you mm. some definitions that will correlate to. So, for example, we're going to ask the first question. My team members ask one another for input regarding their spheres of responsibility. Does this never happen? Does it rarely happen? Does it happen sometimes? Four would be usually or five would be always. So simply write down on a little scratch piece of paper or something in front of you. Just write down your number. Number one and then write down your, uh, your score and we're going to add them up at the end. All right, so we're going to move pretty quickly. Second question. Uh, my team members are quick to celebrate the contributions and achievements of each other. So what's what's the culture of your team? Do you have a culture that regularly celebrates? Never? This never happens. Or sometimes or always. Uh, write that down. Number three, my team members champion others by acknowledging and tapping into one another's skills and expertise. So they're connecting the dots. I see a skill and I'm connecting it to identity. They're championing. Does this happen on your team? Never? Rarely? Sometimes? Usually? Always? Number four, my team members are quick to confront each other about problems in their respective areas of responsibility. How often do people come and they confront you when they see a problem? Getting tougher. Never, rarely, sometimes, usually, always. Number five, my team members ask for feedback without, here's the key, without being prompted. Mm. So how, how, how often over the last month, think about that. As you sat down with a team member, did they say, hey, give me some feedback. Tell me one thing I could, I could do to improve. Getting tougher. Never, rarely, sometimes, usually, always. Number six, my team members are unguarded and genuine with one another. At what level is there just an unguarded? We don't have pretenses of what we can say and what we can't say. We're just unguarded and we can speak pretty freely uh, on your team. One through five. Number seven, my team members question one another in a healthy way about their current approaches and methods. All right. How often are they asking a question that might be a skeptical question that's going to help the overall team maybe do something better. Never, rarely, sometimes, usually, always. And the final question, number eight, my team members give me feedback because I ask them for it. All right, this is connecting to that last question we asked you. How often do you ask for feedback? Uh, well, your team members are giving it to you all the time because just like Hulk Hogan said, brother, Every single time I ask them, they know they're not going to leave the table before I say, hey, make me better. Give me one thing I can do. So, hey, I want you to tally those up. Take, take 15 seconds, add them up, add up your scores. All right, add up your scores, add up your scores, add up your scores. All right, so here's our rubric. And so 8 to 12, if you scored somewhere between 8 and 12 or less than 8, anything from 0 to 12 is you're asleep. And there's some really good news about being asleep, okay? First of all, being asleep means it's irrelevant to you and your team. It's not even on the horizon. Like, it's not happening, and you didn't even know before this webinar that it made a big deal. You are asleep. So here's the good news with being asleep. If you are even average or semi-productive right now on your team, and feedback is not a part of it, you have so much room to apply this, and the delta being so great between when you will take this test a month from now and see a difference and see a real difference in your team. So eight to 12, you're asleep, 13 to 21, you're awake feedback. You, you know, it's, it exists. You know, it should be happening. It's happening some, but it's still an obstacle to you and your team. You're not real comfortable. There's not a real expectation when feedback happens half the time, it's not taken really well because we don't have, we're not doing it really well. Or when we do, it's at the last minute or when we do, it's in crisis mode. And we're giving people feedback. Guys, the worst time to give feedback is when you're in crisis mode and your back's up against the wall, especially if you've ever been in that situation where you know you've been underproducing and your boss or comes to you and says, hey, you got 30 days and I got to give you a little feedback. I almost want to say that's not even fair. It's, it's like give feedback with plenty of time early enough so it's not catching us by surprise, but rather 
wow, it's something that we're doing to build and grow people. Uh, 22 to 30, your active feedback is a support to you and your team. This is supporting your team. It's a part of your makeup. It's a part of your secret sauce. Double down on it and, and continue to improve. Or 31 to 40, you're accelerated. Feedback is your advantage. I guarantee it. Uh, if this is where you are, you know what a game changer it is. It is so normal to give feedback that it's, it is, it's almost looked forward to. Um, you have someone saying, okay, at the end of the meeting, what do we do? Oh yeah, that's right. Hey, give me some feedback. Great. Hey, good. Let me give me some too as well. You're both giving feedback. You just grew a 1% better and you're doing it multiple times a day with people in your organization. Think of the coach scenario again. If your coach only coached you once a week and gave you feedback once a week, how much better would you get as a team? But if multiple times of practice, you're getting just slightly tweaked here and there and 1% here, and 1% here, put the left foot up, just three more inches, et cetera, et cetera. How much better are you going to get? So, there's our team survey, and now I want to bring it practical. So I love this, this, this quote because I want to give you a little more evidence to get you ready to having a feedback session with someone today. Someone today, I want you to ask the question so we can have conversations needed to create the results we say we want in our lives. That means having a conversation about feedback, asking for feedback today is my challenge, or I'm going to say the next 24 hours. How about that? We can, we can have the conversations needed to create the results we say we want in our lives, or we can have all of our reasons why we can't have those conversations. Those are called excuses, by the way. But you cannot have both. You will not change. You will not grow your team. If you don't decide in the next 24 hours to work out the muscle and just test it, just test it, uh, just see if I'm not, if, 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 if this doesn't give you a bit of life to celebrate champion and challenge someone or to ask for feedback and to see their response of someone on your team. Wow, uh, that was pretty awesome to be able to give you feedback. So nonetheless, super cool quote. All right, we're, we're moving down to a real practical part of this. How do I prepare to give feedback? All right, this is a tool that we're going to give you. We try to always give you a go and do tool. Um, again, a, a, a shameless plug for our Spark, uh, our, our, our daily Spark podcast that Corey and Hampton do. They are giving you every day about three to five minutes of a go and do. Here's a leadership principle and a go and do. So this is something we're giving to you. There's going to be a, a resource that's connected to this webinar uh, that will be a go and do. It is this preparation guide for how to give feedback. So we're going to walk through it real briefly here at the end. Um, and then you're going to have it. And you're going to be able to get ready and prepare for your feedback session that you're going to do in the next 24 hours. So right now, think about the name of the person that you think you're going to, you know, you've got a meeting with over the next 24 hours that you're going to ask for feedback or give feedback to. Think of that name. I want you to have that person in mind as we go through three stages of feedback, celebrate, champion, challenge. How do they practically play out? Let's look at it. All right. The very first thing you're going to see this. Okay. I want to Make sure I go back to my definition. Definition. I want to celebrate. What am I going to celebrate around? What is the role or goal this feedback is in relation to? So just simply think, I'm about to go meet with somebody. What is their role and what is a goal that they want to uh, accomplish? And that's where we're going to start. We've got to nail that down. We've got to get clear there. What aspects have especially gone well? Be as specific as possible on the wins. How have they won? What did they win in their job as it pertains to their role or their goal? Even if it's really, really small, where have you seen them do something that's pushed you, the team, the business forward? Uh, what, what, what have you caught them doing right that has created progress in relation to this role or goal? This is really simple. Find something they've done well, even if it's 1% better, and let's give them feedback around it. That's how you prepare to celebrate. You'll get to where you don't have to ask these questions. It just becomes natural. It's like looking in the rearview mirrors. You just do it. When you walk around the halls of your organization, you're giving feedback. You're celebrating people. Again, to get that five to one cadence. Um, champion. All right. Four questions for champion. How can you champion who they are as a person? All right. You've got this person in mind. Here's what they've done well. How does that connect to a value or something consistent You've seen a characteristic that is consistent about who they are. Another, another kind of pro tip for championing, if you know someone's wiring, I know in WildSpark you can take the DISC assessment. We're going to be launching the working genius in the WildSpark uh, very soon. 
But if you have a personal identity assessment that you know someone has, go review yourself with that identity statement and be able to see where their temperament says they should be strong. Those will be clues to probably where they do work really well. Uh, what about them do you appreciate? Ask that question. How can you connect the dots between what you've celebrated and the positive character trait uh, that describes who they are as a person? Mm -hmm. Judson, wow, 160 yards. The goal of scoring two touchdowns in your role of a running back. You are a running back. It's clear you are very blank or you are a blank. All right. You are very generous, talented, smart, humble. Those resonate to people differently than, man, you scored a great touchdown. Now let me give you a challenge. Think you can get three next, next week. Um, let me celebrate the who, and then let me say, Judd, I bet you could do three. You're a running back, man. You've just done two. We're going to see if you can get uh, 162 yards next week. So anyway, here we go. Moving to the final one challenge. There's a little more meat here because you need to be really specific here. You need to, be, you need to, you need to handle this one well. Um, you're not always going to have to attach a challenge. Remember, we've talked about that. But when you do want a challenge, you want to have celebrated championing and then now, hey, let me give you some feedback. I've seen something you've done well. I've told you how, man, I just depend on you so well because you're such a faithful leader. Um, that's who you are. But I do have an area you can grow in. So I want to now rate you on your current performance, where you are now as it pertains to the role and goal. Remember, you've thought about that first. What is the role and goal that they need to be in relationship to? Uh, so what's at stake? I want to I I I tell you clearly, what's at stake if you just get 1% better over and over again here in this area? What could happen to your career? What could happen to your influence on the team? What could happen to your sales goals and the bonus that you want to get at the end of the, end of the quarter? Uh, man, if you can just, just work on getting this one, I got 1% for you today. Uh, but what will it cost them if they don't change? And if you never change in this, man, you won't be able to be that leader that adds influence on the team. Um, and man, you've got so much potential to be that kind of person. What is the specific timeline this needs to occur? Help them see that, hey, I want to give you, I want to come back in two weeks, a month, 30 days, maybe 90 days. And I want to evaluate where you are on this. Give them a timeline where we're going to come back and we're going to we're going to have an opportunity to celebrate, right? Hey, in, in two weeks, I want to come back and have an opportunity to celebrate. So uh, what specific timeline is this going to occur? When is the next check-in for the progress update? All right, so in two weeks, I'm going to come back. We're going to sit down. We're going to look at your, uh, look at your, uh, your quota, and we're going to look where you are. We're going to see uh, if we cover any ground. Uh, what specifically will be viewed as positive progress at that check-in? All right, here's the deal. I don't need to see you. You're at 50, you're at 30% you're right now. We're four months into the year. Uh, so we, we're right about on track. But man, I know that if you'll, you'll, you'll improve in your, your follow through in personalizing your outreach, I believe that number will go up considerably. So let's see how many of those outreach emails you can personalize. And then let's see what your response rate is in two weeks. So let's see if we can get two ticks, 2% 2 better on our, our response rate in two weeks. Let's come back and let's check it. All right, let's give them something that would be positive that's not a super far-reaching goal, but just a 1%. Maybe it's 1%. Let's just get 1% better on your, uh, on, your, uh, on your sales rate there. So what specifically will be viewed as positive progress? We just did that. And then finally, how can I, this is the most important one, after you get real clear on where it is you want to challenge them, how can I help support, encourage, resource, train, or hold you accountable? How can I help? And let them speak. Just sit there. Let them speak. Can I support you? Do you need any encouragement? Can I check in, send you an email? Uh, is there any resources you need from me? Uh, is there anything you don't understand that I could, I could show you or train you in? Uh, or is there any specific accountability that we could kind of line up? Let them chew on that and give you what they need. Uh, and then... Man, three, two, one, off you go. I can't wait to see you in two weeks. So I'm going to land the plane there, about 15 minutes left on the call. But I wanted to give you a very, very pragmatic way to plan for and prep for giving feedback. Mm. If you do this over and over again and you come in and you just think and prepare for the week and who's the, who's the one person this week that I know I'm going to sit down and give feedback for, let me go through and formally put a plan together. 
you'll find that you've not just encouraged one person. There were three or four others that you did along the way as well. So I know we're going to give you a specific and unique challenge right now on the call. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's do it. I, a little pro tip, even coming off of that last challenge cord, I have, I've yet to experience a challenge that goes south when it is opened up from a place of care. And what I mean by that is if you will open up with a, a statement such as, Hey, I, I wanted to challenge you to more because I know what you're capable of and I see the potential inside of you. And I want, I want to see you succeed. I want to see you dominate. If it, if you come at it from that angle, it's going to, it's going to go positively. So just a little small pro tip there. I'm all about practical action steps. I know at this point in the conversation, um, we're, we're wrapping up, right? And what I know about us as humans is we prefer insight over action. We prefer insight over action. And what I mean by that is insight, all these things that Core just delivered, they're really exciting, right? And it's fun and it's it's enjoyable and motivating to think about all the things that could happen in our lives if these things played out. But action is harder. It's more difficult. It requires us to do something. So we're going to go ahead and get the action started right here right now. Um, I, I think it's really it's a really powerful thought to think about 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 people all sending out a, a text message right now and encouraging, celebrating and championing somebody else in your life. So what I would ask you to do is get out your cell phone and the first person that comes to mind, this person is probably already on your radar. As Cord was talking about celebrating and championing earlier, I imagine some of you had somebody come to mind that you likely need to celebrate or challenge or I mean, celebrate or champion. So whoever that person is, open up your phone, find them in your contacts, send them a quick and encouraging text. This will take 30 seconds to do. Uh, send them a text and I'm, I'm going to do this in real time too with everybody, but I would love for you to send, Hey, I've seen you crushing it at this celebrate them. And I think that is meaningful because it shows that you're a person who is fill in the blank. However you want to phrase that, you can put it in your own words, but I'm sending a text right now to my friend, Nick, who I, I know was delivering a keynote this afternoon to his company. And I'm going to send an encouraging text about it. So everybody else do the same, take 10 seconds to do that. And we'll move on. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Hopefully you've sent the text by now. If you're typing out a novel, please don't let us cut you short. Go back to it and finish it as soon as we wrap up the call. A couple of housekeeping items that I wanted to touch on here before we wrap up and um, and I'll go back to our days. Uh, we have a we we've had the leadership cohort running now for a couple of months, and man, has it been powerful. Some of the conversations that I've had the opportunity to facilitate with some of you have been incredibly meaningful and, and growth stirring. I've seen a lot of growth happen in those conversations. So if you'd like to jump in and experience some growth like that and get a firsthand experience of what WildSpark is like, we have got a feedback cohort coming up here in May. Uh, May starts tomorrow, I believe is the first day of May. We'll start our new cohort for feedback. So if you'd like to jump into that, scan this QR code right here on the screen, You'll also be able to find a sign-up link on our LinkedIn page, um, but please sign up for that if you're interested in learning more about WildSpark and you want to experience. So that also wanted to open up to any questions. Uh, I know we only have maybe two minutes left before um, before we close out our, our webinar today, but if anybody had any questions specifically for Cord about feedback and some of what the, the different frameworks that he's unpacked with us today, please fire away. And, um, and as always, it's an honor. It's an absolute honor to get to be on this webinar with each of you. Um, if you're a, a sum of the five people who you spend the most time with, uh, I know we have more than five people here on the call, but I want to be around people like you who are striving to be a better version of yourselves because I know that that's going to help me be a better version of myself. So thank you for joining. Thank you for leaning into growth. And um, thank you for going and making a positive influence on this world. We need you. Only you can influence your circles in the unique way that you can. Only you are in the different circles that you're in. And I think you're in those circles for a very specific reason. We need you to show up. We need you to give feedback. We need you to celebrate champion and challenge so this world can be a better place. That's all I got, Cord. Anything else on your end? No, man. Just uh, I got to send a text to my son 
uh, said, I got to tell the story of you scoring two TDs with 61 yards on my webinar today with over uh, over a couple hundred people. So it really made, made me proud of you all over again. Uh, keep working hard in the gym, buddy. Keep plugging away. So uh, I, got, I, I, I got a little thumbs up. So uh, let's go. That's this, a big uh, deal out of a teenager. Thumbs that, up. That's a big deal out of a teenager. I'm thankful for the thumbs up. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, remember this. This doesn't just work at, in, in the office. You know, at work, it works. You know, at home in the board. You know, from boardroom to family room. So, uh, and celebrate, champion those kids, spouses, uh, those that that you love love the most. And uh, guess what? You can make them better too. Um, give them one percent. Let's go.